Hello everyone. Hello. Are financial statements a mystery to you? Yes. What if you can read it with ease? How many of you like that? Yes. Okay, please turn to your buddy next to you, someone, and say, that sounds good. That sounds good. Right. <laughs> now before I get into my topic, let me share with you a little bit of my background so that you can have a better context of our learning today. So that's me. So people know me as James. Let me share with you my Chinese name. So this is my family name, Leon. I'm a Cantonese. My middle name is the letter C and my last name spelled F-O-O, pronounced as Fu. So the other day I gave my name card to an Australian lady. Very politely she called out my name, Leon, Sifu. <laughs> you watch Kung Fu Panda, you know Master Sifu. <laughs> Now, J-A-M-E-S stands for a few things, actually. Uh, J stands for joy, joyful. So I hope you enjoy the delivery this afternoon as much as I'm going to enjoy sharing it with you. Uh, A represents my profession. So I'm an accountant by training, so I have an accounting background. I'm also a professional trainer. M here stands for married with three children. So as you know, that makes me above average in productivity in the Singapore context. <laughs> e stands for my passion, which is in training. And what I do today is that I will go to companies and I will conduct corporate executive education training, teaching people about finance and accounting. Do business people who are non finance people help them to make better business decisions? And when I'm not working with corporate executives like yourself, I also teach in NUS. I'm part of, I'm the member of the teaching faculty and I teach accounting as well. And I make it easy for people to learn. And the S also stands for storytelling. So we're going to learn about how to tell financial stories today with ease. So I'm, many people who are in business, whether working for someone else or working with others. How many of you are in business for yourself? How many people work for someone else? Okay, good. How many of you are investing your own hard-earned money in the stock market? Yes. So whether you fall into one of these categories, the ability to make sound financial decisions using numbers and understanding financial concepts is a very, very important skill. But then there's a problem. Now what's the problem? The problem here is that most of the time, the financial information or annual reports given to you, produced by, by finance people, are typically hard to understand and full of technical jargon. True? Yes. So my goal here for this afternoon in the limited time that I have to share with you an easy way to appreciate financial statements so and also be able to take away something that you can use immediately. <clears throat> and the first distinction that we are going to learn here is now what are financial statements? Financial statements are simply stories about a business written in numbers. So what are financial statements? They are simply stories about business written in Numbers, that's all there is. And we will learn how to tell those stories. <clears throat> and do fully participate because I'm going to intend to make this as interactive as we can so that you can interact with the material, learn it, assimilate, absorb it as easily as you can. So let's start with a simple story. So let's say you want to buy a property. So maybe you're not in Singapore, maybe you want to buy an overseas retirement home. Perhaps you want to buy, go to Batam and buy this. Say you want to buy a farm. Right? The farm will cost 100000 and you look into your piggy bank and this is what you find. You have 80000 Question, are you able to buy the farm, yes or no? You need 100 but you are short of 20 right? How can you buy a farm? Yes, only if you use something called OPM, which stands for other people's money. So potentially they say you can borrow money from four different people, they're called the four F's. What's the first F? Family. 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 Second F? Friends. Friends. Third F? 
financial institutions, and they say the last F is the most important. I say, what is that? They say, uh, fools. <laughs> People foolish enough to lend you money. So 80 plus 20 will allow you to buy a farm of a hundred. Psychological quiz, there's no right or wrong answer, so I'm going to ask you to help and participate. Uh, I believe all of you have worked with accountants, so you know how they are like, the way they think, the way they behave, they are quite different from normal people. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> if I were to ask you to pick a shape that's, that's best described an accountant, the way they talk, the way they think, the way they feel, I'm going to, we're going to do this one shape at a time. How many of you think that a triangle will represent an accountant best? Raise your hands. Okay, quite a few hands. So some people choose the accountant, uh, the triangle, and I ask why. They say, oh, because the accountants are very sharp with numbers. I say, thank you, that's a compliment. Yeah. How many of you would choose the circle? Anyone? Circle? Okay. And some hands are up. I ask people, why do you choose the circle? They say, when the accountants talk, they go round and round and round. I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I hope you're still with me. And how many of you would choose the letter Z? More hands go up, and I ask them, why do you choose the letter Z? They say, when accountants talk, I sleep. I hope you're still awake. Now, everyone, can you please raise your right hand? Right hand. Wave. Raise your left hand. Wave. Wonderful. Confirm equipment both working. You just haven't voted yet. How many of you would choose large shape square? Well, overwhelming majority. Why? Because accountants are square. So, thank you. Give us a round of applause. Perfect answer, right? So fortunately or unfortunately for you, I'm also one of them. So to tell you exactly the same story as the farm, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a square or a box. And this is what I will say. That what you have bought here is an asset that costs 100,000. Now how did you Fun. How did you pay for the asset? You borrow 20,000 and anything you borrow and you need to pay back so therefore you owe people money, we call it a liability. AT comes from your own money and the account gets a bit complicated with the language because the E which stands for equity. So assets are what you own Liabilities are what you owe, and equity is your investment or your capital into this asset. So let's do a quick recap. What's A? Asset, which is what you own, and liability is what you owe, and equity is what you invested in. You are a wonderful audience. Oh my God. Give us a big, awesome applause. Well done. Okay, amazing. Learning well, learning well. Now take a look at this. The numbers on both sides, what do you notice? They are? Equal and because they're equal on both sides, the accountant says, Oh, because it's in balance, and I'm writing this on a sheet of paper. I simply call this a balance sheet. Isn't that amazing? So, what you've just learned is the balance sheet. So, this is the first story that we learned financial storytelling. One of the stories that financial statements tell you is the balance sheet, which is really a funding story. It tells you that your asset is funded by. Owner's investment, 80, and borrowed money of 20. Now, question. What's one of the top reasons why companies fail? Cash flow. Thank you. One top reason I'm going to share with you is this.
So can you please tell me which company would you consider to be financially stronger? The first one or the second one? The first one. Why is that so? Because it has simply less loan or less liabilities. And this one has got more loans, more liabilities. Now, why does it matter? Because this is number one, very important. So this company is what we call a low debt company. A low debt company, low borrowing. This is what we call a high leverage company. High leverage company. So tell me, what is the risk which one will face in terms of ability to repay? First one, the second one. Second one. So you have high leverage, that means to say you have high borrowings. That means to say that if there is a recession, for example, it's harder for you to repay back your loan. And potentially, the, the banks will come to you and say, I'm going to take back everything, and if you can't, I'm going to make you a bankrupt. So this will tell us something. And what does it tell us? This is what we call a... Everybody, shall we call it up? A strong balance sheet, and this is what we call a weak balance sheet. So companies with big, weak balance sheet, high chance of going bankrupt. So example, are you aware of this company called High Flux? Yes. That's our latest corporate casualty today. So High Flux shares has been suspended. If you're a bondholder, you're a shareholder, you cannot sell your shares, you cannot collect back your money. So they're thinking about how they can repay all their loans. So do you think they have a strong or weak balance sheet? Exactly, weak balance sheet. So if you take a look at this, now what happened here is this. Let's compare Apple. Everyone knows Apple. World's most valuable company, $943 billion of market cap, almost $1 trillion. Take a look at Apple. Apple looks like this. 3 is to 1 ratio, right? 30% what we call the net debt to equity ratio. This is 1, this is 3, one third. One third. High Flux, over the years, they started with they look like this, and eventually it was on par, equal, and ultimately they look like this. And we know what happened to Apple, and we know what happened to Hyflux. Is the picture clear to you? Yes. Can you tell the story of the balance sheet? Yes. So therefore, the conclusion about the balance sheet story, what it's telling us here is that we want strong or weak balance sheet? Oh. Strong. So please turn to your buddy and say, strong balance sheet is good. <laughs> okay, and do remember to thank your partner as well, give a high five, say you're awesome, all right? Ready for next story? Yes. Thank you. So what is this? Pokemon, nope. Okay, it's the back of something. It's the back of a cow. Okay. So very important now. What happens here is this. If you have a cow, do you, what, what does it produce for you? Milk. Milk. You sell, make money, yes? What happens if the cow doesn't produce this for you and all it does is to give you this? That's no good, correct? You are very optimistic. Yeah. So what we want is a cow that produces for us. In other words, what we want is the cow that gives us what is called... Everybody, the word is... Performance, right? So what we want to do is for a company to be able to not just be strong, but be able to perform. Uh, what do you mean by performance? Simply, So this represents your income, which is your sales. This represents your expenses, yeah, your costs and your overheads. So what do you, which one do you want? Do you want high income or high expenses? High. high income. So that's the second reason why companies fail is when their costs or their expenses are higher than their income. So what we want is for I to be more than X and the difference is what we call profit. So for example, if you take a look at high flux, so for the last three years they've been making losses. But on the other hand, if you take at Apple, Apple has been consistently, if you take their profit, divide by their sales, they have a margin of more than 20% consistently. Yeah. 
So that's very, very profitable for them. So that's the second financial story. So I want you to turn to your partner and just say this thing. Please turn to your partner and say, profit is performance. Please turn to your partner. Yeah. So that's the reason why we need to look at what we call the, this is what we call the P&L, or we also call it the income statement, right? P&L stands for profit and loss. And what I'm going to do here is to put it all together for you so that you can see how businesses create value or create wealth, and the same thing you can do for your own business as well. So how companies create wealth simply, they start off with investors' money, which is share capital, they borrow some loans, they buy assets, and as they use up the assets in the process of their business, what do they do? So cash can become salary expense, cash can become rent, or a machine can be used up in the form of depreciation expense. And while using up all this expense, what they're really doing is generating sales. And if your income is more than your expense, you will have a profit, and you can start the next cycle again reinvesting the business. So this is what we call the wealth creation cycle. And if you take this, the profit, and you divide by equity, this is what you will get. It's called ROE, which stands for return on equity. Everyone, it's called return on equity. And if you take a look at Apple, the return on equity is 35%. One dollar profit, uh, 35 cents of profit for every dollar that they invested in the company. So can you imagine you put in a dollar, next year the company will deliver 35 cents of profit, the next year 35 cents, the next year 35 cents. So how long does it take to get your capital back? Three, three years. Three years, that's the payback period. Three years, cap if you invested in Apple shares. That's the reason why they're such a wealth creating machine that the world investors love it. They are the most valuable companies in the world. So I'm going to just wrap up what we've learned. And essentially what we've learned are, I want to Recap five things. Everyone, can you do this? Raise your raise your hand this way. So the first. Okay, I'm gonna write it up for you. So let's call it up at uh, one time. Hands up. So what is A? That's it. Uh, do this. We count one. What's L? Liabilities. What is E? Equity, let's count out. X for expenses, expenses I for income. income. Now what I want you to do is turn to your friend and say, I have now grubs accounting. Okay. So did you learn something useful? Yeah. Thank you. So let me wrap it up. So did James always make it easy and simple for you? Yeah. Thank you.